Hello, everyone. We're about to begin. As a reminder, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the Q&A function on the bottom of Zoom. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and hand it off to Petra. Thanks, Stephen. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this online event uh, to learn about a breakthrough treatment for painful diabetic neuropathy with Dr. Kazra Emmerdelfin. Um, Stephen, if you want to hit next. My name is Petra Nelson. I'm a member of Nevro's team here in California. We are hosting the presentation today about a new FDA approved treatment option for painful diabetic neuropathy. HFX or PDN is a sensor spinal cord stimulation system that uses 10 kilohertz therapy, which will be a part of today's discussion. Today, Dr. Ember Elfin will provide an introduction to the HFX solution and highlight some of the differences and benefits relative to conventional medical management. We will also allow time at the end, of course, to answer important questions from the audience. So definitely submit your questions at any time by clicking the question icon right down at the bottom of the Zoom window. All general questions related to the presentation and procedures discussed are encouraged and welcomed. We will address as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. Uh, for questions specific to your unique history though, we do recommend that you speak with a physician personally for medical advice. As I mentioned, Nevro is the sponsor of this talk and also the manufacturer of the HFX solution, including the Sensa Spinal Cord Stimulation System. We are a passionate group of pe people exclusively focused on developing innovative solutions for chronic pain. Worldwide, over 75,000 patients have now been treated with the HFX solution. Next slide. So with that, I'm very excited to introduce Dr. Amber Delphin, our expert speaker for the day. A little background, he is double board certified and a fellowship trained pain management expert. Dr. Amber Delphin specializes in interventional pain management and neuromodulation. He is currently a vice president of clinical affairs at the American Society of Pain and Neuroscience. He's an advisor to multiple medical device organizations focusing on chronic pain treatments and is actively involved in clinical research for the development of advancements in chronic pain. Finally, he has published more than 70 scientific papers and book chapters. Dr. Amr Delphin, thank you for your contribution today. I'll now turn it over to you. Teacher, thank you so much for that really warm introduction. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I know how difficult it is to get away from uh, the obligations to the family and to work and all that, to listen to a 30 minute presentation. But I assure you, this is groundbreaking information that's going to excite you, especially if you suffer from painful diabetic neuropathy or have diabetes and, and know about this condition. Um, as Petra said, I'm a practicing physician. I'm not an employee of Nebro. Uh, I have been doing research for the last 17 years of my practice, but I've been in practice for about 23 years in Northern California. Our office is just outside of San Francisco in a town called Mona Creek. Um, I'm um, what you might call an expert in the field of spinal cord stimulation. And I'm going to share some of that expertise with all of you today. Some of you may have already learned about spinal cord stimulators from family members uh, or loved ones or friends. Uh, but we now have a new solution called a PHFX solution, which is really exciting, especially as it pertains to painful diabetic neuropathy. Diabetes is becoming more and more prevalent all around the United States. As you know, with, uh, as we become more sedentary, as uh, uh, the population gains weight, diabetes becomes more of a problem here in the United States and around the world. And 20% of the diabetic patients will develop painful diabetic neuropathy somewhere beyond five years after they're diagnosed with uh, uh, diabetes. And about 45% of those patients will always be refractory to conventional medical management. That's medications, exercise and physical therapy, and topical uh, solutions that can potentially be put on the painful diabetic neuropathy areas for the patients. It's a big problem. We haven't had a good solution. And this is the reason why we think HFX may be a huge step in the right direction. Next slide, please. But before I get started to talk about this from a scientific standpoint, let's hear from uh, the patients themselves. This is just a mashup of videos of patients who have painful di diabetic neuropathy and are enjoying HFX solution as we speak. Steven, roll the tape.
Well, I've had diabetic neuropathy for probably about 15 years. The pain would start from my back down to my um, hips, and then it'd just radiate down to my legs, my feet, my toes. I have diabetes since I was 31 years old, and I've had neuropathy for the last six or seven years. Tried just about every pain medicine, and none of them really even worked. Couldn't do anything for myself. I was stuck living with the pain. The description that, that patients give for painful diabetic neuropathy is quite varied. I've had patients describe that it's like being stung. Some people get severe, intense itching. Some people have numbness and pain, which seems very paradoxical. Depression is profoundly common in this population. We haven't had effective therapies that have been a solution for us. After my HFX implant was put in, I felt almost immediate relief. All the pain was gone. Now I'm to the point where I'm feeling all this relief and I take zero medication for my diabetic neuropathy. It's unbelievable not having the side effects of those pain medications. I don't have to depend on anybody else. I can finally start depending on myself. HFX is my best friend. HFX changed my quality of life. My whole attitude has changed. I feel like I have a future. Having something that, uh, like HFX Solutions, that is uh, an implantable device that doesn't require, you know, long-term drug therapy, doesn't require a patient to suffer from side effects that the drugs really elicit, is actually really a wonderful thing to be able to offer. Next slide, please. I never get tired of watching that recording. I think it's really refreshing to be able to see what we've been able to do for quite a few patients with painful diabetic neuropathy and HFX. And without further ado, let's get into our presentation. First, we're gonna talk about spinal cord stimulation or what we call SCS. I want everyone to be able to understand what this premise is all about and what we've been using it for so far. Uh, we're gonna talk about the evolution of spinal cord stimulation and how the HFX solution, the platform that we're going to talk about today is different than all the other platforms available on the market. We're going to talk about painful diabetic neuropathy and what it's about. A lot of you may be suffering from PDN as we speak. We're going to talk about the conventional treatments for PDN and the clinically proven long-term relief that HFX is giving to the PDN patients as we speak. Last but not least, we're going to talk about what to expect uh, from HFX for PDN and who would be a good candidate for it. At the end of the presentation, we're going to answer as many questions as we can while being respectful of your time. Next slide, please. So spinal cord stimulation is nothing new. It's been around for about 55 years, and it's a way for us to send very minute electrical impulses to the spinal cord, which will in turn mask a pain signal from going to the brain. Roughly speaking, it's kind of like when you hit your funny bone, what's the first thing that you do? You take your other hand and you rub your funny bone area because the tactile sensation, the touch will distract the pain signal from going to the brain. Now imagine a very sophisticated system doing all of that from the inside in order to distract the pain signal from getting to the brain, which is where we feel all the pain from any part of our body. Uh, this is what spinal cord do. Spinal cord stimulators do that by sending very minute electrical impulses to the spinal cord. Next slide, please. So it's a well-established approach for managing pain in the chronic, uh, chronic pain in the trunk and limbs. You know, so uh, it's been around for over 50 years, as I said, about 55 years. But what we are interested in is the next-gen solutions, this particular solution called HFX, which is a new platform that uses a specific frequency only exclusive to this manufacturer and this brand, which is called Nevro. And that frequency is 10,000 Hertz. The 10,000 Hertz spinal cord stimulator, now called HFX, is the type of solution that doesn't cause any tingling or what we call paresthesias for the patients. With all the other devices, the patients feel a pleasant tingling sensation in where they have pain. But because of the fact that the tingling cannot be turned off, in a prolonged period of time, it can be annoying and, it can, uh, and patients can potentially abandon the devices because of it. This is especially true in PDN patients because they suffer from tingling and burning to begin with. 
So the last thing they want is additional tingling on top of the tingling they're suffering from to mask their pain signal. Since this inception, um, we've, uh, I'm sorry, since this approval by the FDA, we've used the HFX platform in over 70,000 patients with chronic pain in their trunk and limbs uh, in the last uh, five to six years. And it's been spectacular. We've been able to help a lot of patients, but we knew that we could do more. And one of the reasons why we started to look at uh, painful diabetic neuropathy as investigators and as physicians was mainly because of the fact that we just didn't have a clear solution for this problem. Next slide. So DHFX solution is really the only spinal cord stimulation system approved and on the market for painful diabetic neuropathy. The FDA granted this approval to Nevro, the manufacturer of the HFX solution in July of 2021, we, the investigators, uh, did a study with painful diabetic neuropathy and HFX to be able to show how this therapy can potentially be a game changer for our patient population. And by the way, as I said before, HFX is the only platform on the market that has 10,000 hertz frequency, which is the frequency we used in our study for painful diabetic neuropathy. Next slide. So, for those of you who don't know what painful diabetic neuropathy is, but it's the type of nerve damage that's caused by diabetes. High blood sugar can potentially injure the nerves, especially the small nerve endings throughout the body, especially the ones in the legs and feet. Age and the duration of diabetes can potentially uh, increase the chances of nerve damage for the patients. Although the patients can get neuropathy in their arms as well, most of the painful diabetic neuropathy patients suffer from burning, and tingling and sharp jabbing pain in the uh, distal portion of their legs and feet. Painful diabetic neuropathy can feel like shooting, burning pins and needles um, for the patients, and it can keep them up at night. This is what they complain about all the time when they come to see us. Next slide, please. So what are some of the conventional treatments for PDM? Some of you may have already tried some of these things. Membrane stabilizing medicines, such as gabapentin, otherwise known as Neurontin, pregabalin, otherwise known as Lyrica, can be used to treat painful diabetic neuropathy. In fact, there are studies out there that show that these medicines can potentially be very helpful for a portion of the PDM patients. Antidepressants such as Effexor or Duloxetine, which is called Cymbalta as well, that's the commercial name for them, have been used for PDM as well with some results. Older tricyclic antidepressants such as amitriptyline and nortriptyline have also been used for PDN with some success. Last but not least are pain medications. Pain medications are always a last resort for us, mainly because of the fact that they just don't help this type of neuropathy. We use pain medications and only small amounts of it uh, for achy mechanical type pain, such as arthritis of the knees or arthritis of the hips. We use it for some back pain but for neur neuropathic pain, these medicines are not necessarily effective and we try to stay away from it. Overall, these medicines can be helpful, but for a majority of the patients, it cannot be uh, a spectacular amount of pain relief. There's also topical treatments like capsaicin. Capsaicin comes from hot peppers. It's an ointment that the patients can actually rub on their feet. It can be very helpful, but God forbid if the patients touch their eyes, they can be burning for a long time. So it's not without its side effects. Physical therapy and exercise is the cornerstone of everything that we do for our patients. And we continue to use this type of therapy in order to help our patients increase their function and hopefully reduce the progression of disease, not only with PDN, but with any other type of um, chronic pain they may be suffering from. Next slide. But all of these medicines that we mentioned, all the topical solutions we mentioned, physical therapy and exercise can only give us a, a, about 40, if we, if we get lucky, 50% pain relief in some of the patients. This is the reason why HFX for PDN is really exciting because of the kind of results we've been able to get in the study that we are in the middle of at this point. The six month data has shown, shown us that 85% of the patients get significant long-term pain relief. Pain relief. When I say significant, I mean more than 50% pain relief in these patients. And there's a 76% improvement in their pain scores based on what they've reported to us in this scientific study. That's unprecedented in PDN. None of these medicines have been able to show that in a large population of patients um, um, for painful diabetic neuropathy. And this is the reason why we get so excited about these results. 
Next slide, please. Aside from that, patients who suffer from PDM have burning at night as well, and they can't sleep very well. So 60% of the patients in the study actually reported significant improvement in their sleep, um, and 62% of the patients actually showed, uh, reported improvement in the sensations in their feet as well. Now, let me tell you something. With spinal cord stimulation, despite the fact that it's been around for 55 years, we've never seen improvement in the sensation in any patient's feet. With painful diabetic neuropathy, to see that in a number of our patients within the study. And that's really exciting. And frankly, we're trying to wrap our head around it and try to understand why it's happening. But nonetheless, it's a huge step in the right direction. And you can bet that we're investigating it more in order to see what, how we can optimize that return of the sensation for our patients in a better manner. Last but not least, 92% of the patients were satisfied with the treatment they were getting with the HFX platform for their PDM. Next slide, please. So what to expect? First of all, to speak to a physician to see if the HFX solution is the right uh, solution for you. And at the end of this presentation, I will give you a website where you can actually con uh, go through uh, a process and see if you can find a physician in your area if you're at all interested in this solution. Uh, if you have been deemed a good candidate and your physician thinks that you can, do, thinks that you can move, uh, move forward with this, then you can have a trial. The trial is just like a test drive. It's a temporary trial where the leads are actually placed inside the spine through needles, not surgery, and it's connected to an outside device that basically gets taped onto your back. And that looks like that small oval on the right of the item number two. The patients walk for about six days or so in order for the patient himself or herself to determine if this is the right therapy for them. By the way, most skilled physicians can do the trial within 15 to 20 minutes. And then pulling the leads out in the office at the end of the trial takes about three seconds to do. The patients who are successful may move to a permanent implant. The patients who are not successful can move forward and just go back to their conventional treatment. The permanent implant is a little bit more involved, but it's still outpatient minor surgery. The device is implanted under the skin and the leads are implanted right inside the spine. And the device is good for 10 years at a time. It just requires to be charged for about 30 to 45 minutes every day in order to keep the system running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, by the way, because of the fact that there's no tingling associated with this device, you can actually drive with it and operate machinery with it based on the FDA labeling. And most patients keep their devices on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, mainly because of the fact that pain doesn't stop when you sleep. Next slide, please. These are the four components of the HFX solution. The top, the top left is a trial simulator. As you can see, it's a very small oval, no bigger than my cell phone right here. And that oval gets the leads in it and it gets uh, glued onto the back with the, with the special dressing. The leads look, look like the ones you see on the, in the top right. And you can also see the battery that's the permanent implant in that picture as well. Those leads are for the trial, put through needles to go into place. And for the permanent implant, they can also be placed through needles right inside uh, the spine. And the battery itself, which is no bigger than a small matchbox, can get implanted subcutaneously under the skin in an area where you can reach it. The bottom right is the remote control for the system. The remote control will allow the patient to have full control over the system. You can turn the system on or off, choose from different programs, or increase or decrease the amplitude of the energy that's being delivered to the spinal cord. But please don't think that you'll be left alone with this device. The manufacturer of this device has an entire experts team in order to be able to support every single patient with this implant, uh, not just at the beginning, but throughout the life of the implant and beyond. The, the company is really committed in getting the best outcomes in the patient so that they can make sure that all the experts are available to you at all times but the remote is your control if you need to control the system on your own. The bottom left is a charging device. The charging device is a wireless de device that can go into a belt and the belt is worn around the patient's belt. Um, I'm sorry, around the patient's waist where they can actually charge the device for about 30 to 45 minutes every day. All my patients feel that, that the charging process fits into their routine. I have a patient who commutes to work and it takes him about 40 minutes to get to work and he charges his device during that commute as he gets to work. I have a patient who watches the news every night 
and he, she puts the charger on as she sits on the couch to watch the news and she's charged by the, by the time the news is over. So the routine is incredibly important. Next slide, please. So who's a good candidate? Well, first, you will have to have been di diagnosed with diabetes. And if you have painful diabetic neuropathy and have been refractory to conventional medical management, if you've tried two or more of the medications that we just talked about and you fail them, then you may be a good candidate for HFX for your painful diabetic neuropathy. Next slide. In my patient population, I've been using the HFX solution for all kinds of different chronic pain in the trunk and limb since the FDA approval of this device in 2015. And by the way, it took 12 years of research and development for the HFX platform to become available to physicians like myself so we can use it on our patient population. And I'm pleased to report to all of you that we've been able to reduce my patient's medications by about 72% in the HFX patients. And 85% of them have been able to achieve long-term pain relief. And when I say long-term, long -term, I don't mean months, I mean years, and that's music to my ears. As the patients get continued pain relief, they can improve in their function. And 84% of my patients are reporting improvement in their level of function from where they started at their baseline. Last but not least, pain patients don't sleep well. They're up at night because their pain wakes them up. And 89% of my patients have had improvement in their sleep. When they sleep better at night, they're well rested and they can function better during the day and be a valuable citizen to all of us, to their family members and to their friends. Next slide. So getting back to what you enjoy, we started with Mindy. We're gonna end our presentation with Mindy as well. Mindy happens to be my patient. She's from Texas, but she lives in Northern California, just like me, because I grew up in Texas as well. And I now live in Northern California. But one of the things that she said, in my opinion, that's really profound here is that I can finally sleep at least a good eight hours. I don't feel tired when I wake up in the morning. I feel like I'm ready to jump out of bed and take on the day. This is the ailment that our chronic pain patients have. They cannot have a good day because the pain gets the best of them at night and during the day. If I'm able to give this patient more good days, then I've done my job right. There's a lot of patient stories out there. And if you'd like, you can take a picture of this slide because the web address is at the bottom of this slide, hfx4pdn.com forward slash patient stories forward slash. There's a lot of story, stories just like me and these out there. And on that very website, hfx4pdm.com, there's a lot more information about the HFX solution and where the physicians may be in your area who do the HFX solution for their patients that you could potentially go and have a consult with to, in order to determine whether you're a good candidate for this type of therapy. Next slide, please. So be a part of, part of the conversation. It's really important for everyone to understand that as a patient, you need to ask the right questions and it's incredibly important. As I said before, spinal cord stimulation is nothing new. There's a lot of different brands out there and there's a lot of different frequencies and waveforms out there and all of them are good, but there's only one the HFX solution, the 10,000 Hertz SCS that's been approved for painful diabetic neuropathy. So one of your first questions for your physician should be, are you aware of, of a treatment for painful diabetic neuropathy called the HFX solution? Did you know that HFX solution was recently approved by the FDA for the painful diabetic neuropathy? Do you think I would be a good candidate for the HFX solution? How much pain relief can I expect from this? And by the way, kind of know because I told you that as an, on average, our PDN patients had about 76% pain relief. So you should be somewhere around there, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but 76% pain relief is a very, very good goal to have in, in, in mind. Is the HFX solution covered by my insurance? And by the way, the short answer is yes, absolutely yes. If you like, you can take a self-assessment uh, exam right at, on hfx4pdn.com in order to determine if you are a good candidate for PDN even before you go in to see a, a physician. Visit that website for more information. Next slide, please. With that, I'm at the end of my presentation. As I promised, I didn't take more than about 25 minutes to do my presentation. And Petra's coming back on to basically ask me some of the questions that some of the audience may have asked um, through the chat uh, as part of the 
uh, uh, during the presentation. And don't forget to put your questions in that Q&A panel as they come to your mind. Petra? Great. Thank you again, Dr. Amir Delphin. Um, we do have, have some already lined up, but please go ahead. Um, and yeah, and, and as Dr. Amir Delphin had said, hit that Q&A button right at the bottom of the window um, and you can type in your, your question there. So first up we have is, uh, does this treat other types of neuropathy? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. So uh, we know that spinal cord stimulation and the HFX solution have been approved for the chronic pain in trunk and limbs. At this point, the only on-label treatment for neuropathy is for painful diabetic neuropathy based on this robust study that we were completing. Uh, so the other types of neuropathies are not on label, but uh, that's something that you can certainly discuss with your own physician to see if your type of neuropathy can potentially be treated with spinal cord stimulation. Great, next up we have, um, what if I haven't tried prescription medications? Yeah, I, as I said before, I think it's incredibly important for everybody who has PDN to try prescription medications first. Prescriptions are easy. It's just a pill that you take in order, in order to be able to alleviate some of your pain. If a prescription medication is giving you adequate pain relief, then there's no need for an HFX solution and you should absolutely try it first. But if you fail two or more conventional types of treatments, including medications, then the HFX solution may be the right answer for you. Just looking through these. Great, right. so next one is, how bad does your pain have to be to use this? Well, uh, again, a very, very good question. So the pain has to be um, to the point that it's a hindrance in your life. If you can't have quality of life, if you're being, because of your painful diabetic neuropathy, and what you've done to treat your diabetes and to treat your painful diabetic neuropathy conventionally have not been successful, then you may be one of the best candidates for this type of therapy. Right, thank you. Next up is what is involved in the trial phase? Yeah, the trial is actually, you know, so uh, as interventional pain physicians, we uh, place a, uh, needles inside the spine to inject medications, to cauterize nerves, things like that. In this particular platform, what we do is that we put small needles under x-ray guidance right inside the spine and put these leads that are no bigger than the inside of a pen uh, right over the spinal cord. And you can use x-ray guidance to gently place these leads and these contacts right over the spinal cord where they need to be. And then the the leads will be coming out of the skin. The needles are taken out. The addressing is placed on the patient's back and connected to the outside trial stimulator, which is as big as my cell phone right here. And that trial stimulator gets taped to the back and the patients try it for about six days. It takes about 15 minutes for me to, to do that trial. Now, most physicians can do it anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. And the trial is only temporary. And at the end of it, the entire device is removed. If you love it, then we move over to a permanent implant. If you don't love it, then we can just go back to the conventional medical management. Right. Um, the next one is, you know, yeah, what does the recovery period entail after getting the permanent implant? The per permanent implant is an outpatient procedure. It's subcutaneous surgery and uh, all patients, 99.9% .9 of the patients go home right after the permanent implant is completed. There's usually some pocket pain because we have to make an incision and make a pocket to implant the device and the leads under the skin. That lasts for about a day or two. And most patients are able to start functioning really well after that. You know, so it takes about six weeks and the entire thing sort of scars in and the patients can do just about anything they like. In, in fact, in my practice, I start um, physical therapy and rehabilitation for my patients about six weeks after they've uh, um, been implanted with the permanent implant. Excellent. Next question is that, can I get an MRI? Yes, absolutely. So that's a very, very good question. Uh, there comes a time in everyone's life that they need to get a diagnostic MRI for whatever reason. And MRI compatibility is, is an important issue. And this device is absolutely MRI compatible. And the patients who've been implanted with an HFX platform can get an MRI for anywhere in their body 
if their uh, physicians choose to order that imaging study for them. Great. And then related to that also is, um, what if you have a pacemaker? Pacemakers are a different story. Pacemakers um, uh, can be from different manufacturers. Uh, it's really important to understand that the, all of these the devices are designed not to interact with each other. So if somebody is being considered for the HFX solution and they have a pacemaker in place, we typically ask the pacemaker rep to come to the OR in order to check the pacemaker to ensure that there's no interaction with them before we proceed with the HFX solution. And uh, frankly, we've never seen that in my practice. Great. Uh, are there conditions that would not make me a good candidate for the HFX solution? Yes, uh, there, there's, there are certain comorbidities which may be issues. If the patients are morbidly obese, you know, for example, if they're over 400 pounds, it may be difficult uh, for the surgical procedure to be performed. If they're chronic smokers and they're prone to surgical infections, they may not be good candidates for this. If they're on anticoagulants, which cannot be stopped for a minor procedure, then they may not be good candidates for this type of procedure. But frankly, what I encourage all the patients to do is to go in, speak to a physician about their condition and find out if they're actually good candidates for this therapy or not. This is not something that we can discuss over a web conference, mainly because of the fact that every patient is complex and every patient is their own individual. And every individual deserves to get the kind of attention from their physician in order to determine if they're a good candidate for this solution or not. Great, thank you. Um, there's a couple here that I will, I'll, I will actually go ahead and, and take, give you a little bit of a break. You can get some water. Um, one is, uh, how can I find a provider offering the HFX uh, solution? I've seen, you know, a couple of those, you know, kind of local questions. Uh, the best thing to do is to go to www.hfxforpdn.com and right in the top right corner, you're going to see, you know, find a physician button. Um, it's very straightforward. Then you can just type in your location, your zip code. There's even a map that you can look, um, you know, and find, um, you know, all of the, uh, you know, any physicians near nearby you. So uh, yeah, recommend uh, doing that because that is definitely, you know, a first step also in terms of um, having that initial consultation um, with them. And again, you know, that, that physician will of course work with your primary care physician throughout the entire, um, entire process and journey. Um, the next and, one, and oh, go ahead. Physicians, yeah, I don't want to cut you off. Even, no, no problem. There are even physicians in Lubbock, Texas, because one of the, yeah. the, 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 the patients in the audience asked that question. You can find those on hfxforpdn.com. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then a very important question, I know you get asked this uh, a lot is, will this be covered by my, my insurance? We talked about it a little bit earlier, but yeah, just to, to it is an important one, right? So um, yeah, HFX is covered by all major you know, insurance plans, including Medicare and Medicare supplemental um, that you may have. Uh, really any other you know, specific plan questions related to coverage or costs are gonna vary um, based on specific plan benefits, right? Which vary between individual plans and states and everywhere. So it's really best to discuss that um, you know, with one of those providers offering the HFX solution that we mentioned you can find on, um, I'll say it again, www.hfxforpdn.com and that find a physician right in the top right corner um, on, the, on the website there. Great. Well, I'm ready to turn the attention back to you, Dr. Emmer Dolphin. A uh, question we have for you is, uh, will it help with loss of sensation um, in my foot? Uh, that's a good question, but a difficult question to answer. As I uh, uh, presented as part of my presentation, in a portion of our patients, we saw improvement in the lack of sensation from painful diabetic neuropathy in, uh, in a portion of our patients. However, that's not something we can promise. What we have here is a platform that can potentially help the patient's pain. And the fact that some people had sensory improvement was really the icing on the cake. We're trying to wrap our head around it and to understand it better, but we can't promise that to any patient. So the, the short answer is maybe, but that's something that you can, that you can hope for if the, the HFX solution is helping your painful diabetic neuropathy. Right. Um, one more question that I know I had when I uh, started um, my, my job here as well is 
Does this work like a TENS unit or, or is it different? If you can maybe just explain the difference there. Yeah, it's by far one of the most common questions that the patients ask. I joke about this all the time that if I could just have a nickel for a film, I've been asked that question, then maybe I'd be retired by now. Uh, but uh, um, it doesn't work like a TENS unit. A TENS unit is um, comparatively a very rudimentary device that sends um, electrical impulse, impulses into the superficial tissue right under the skin and the superficial muscles. Those TENS units work at a different frequency to reduce the amount of pain and myofascial discomfort that the patients may have, uh, but it doesn't help uh, it doesn't send any electrical impulses to the spinal cord or to the brain for that matter. It's just a transcutaneous device for a local area. What we have in a spinal cord stimulator is a very sophisticated system that sends specific electrical impulses to the spinal cord in order to mask the pain signal from getting to the brain. So no, it's not like a TENS unit. It's actually very, very different and far more sophisticated. And in terms of the, the efficacy of, you know, for treating for, for painful diabetic neuropathy, maybe if you could address that. Absolutely. TENS units do not help painful diabetic neuropathy. They've never been tested in a long-term evidence-based scientific study to see if they do that. And in fact, the only patients who respond to TENS units, and it's always on a short-term basis, is patients who have myofascial pain, muscle pain in the lower back or in their neck or in their shoulder. So it's not something that we use for painful diabetic neuropathy at all. Great. Um, and then uh, I, I already have an SES device. Can I get this one? Uh, so Can I still it all get depends. this one even though I've, I already have one? Well, if, it all depends. If your SCS device for, is for a different problem, for example, if you have a uh, bladder issue and you've gotten a stimulator uh, for your bladder, then you could potentially be considered for something like this because it's in a different area. But if you have an SCS device, a spinal cord stimulator device implanted in your body for a different indication, chances are you may not be a good candidate for this because that space has already been occupied by a different device. Having said that, it's an excellent question to ask a local physician who does HFX on a regular basis in order for a patient to determine if they're a good candidate or not. Because SCS devices are implanted for different indications and they could be in different areas and there may still be space and and the indication for the patient to move forward with PDN. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to answer that question specifically because again, it, it can, the patients are complex and they have to be individualized. Great. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of, kind of combine two is that, uh, you know, uh, somebody's doctor has suggested uh, Proclaim XR, pro, um, if, if I'm saying that correctly. And, you know, your thoughts on that brand and also, you know, really what are the, what's the difference between the HFX solution and other SES devices? Yeah, uh, I'm glad that question came up. I mentioned this to, throughout my presentation. So Proclaim XR is, is a device made by a different manufacturer. It's a good device. It's been tested for low back and leg pain, but it has not been tested for painful diabetic neuropathy on a long-term basis. It does not offer that 10,000 Hertz frequency that's exclusive to the HFX solution. And the only study that's been done so far with uh, um, for painful diabetic neuropathy was with the HFX solution at 10,000 Hertz. And that's the reason why uh, the FDA granted the HFX solution, the indication for painful diabetic neuropathy. So is the Proclaim XR a good device? Yes. Is it for painful diabetic neuropathy? At this point, we have no evidence to, to suggest. Right. Um, I know that, you know, I think technically we're getting into the transition to fall from summer, um, but it's definitely still having some uh, warm, uh, warm days around the country. Is, can, you, can you swim with the device? You bet. Once the wounds heal, the patients can actually swim with the device. I know a lot of patients like to engage in aqua therapy. They like to go for swims in heated pools, especially in the colder areas of the country. Um, once the incisions heal, which is basically a week or two, the patients can actually jump into the pool and get back into their aqua activities. Great. Um, and then, you know, yeah, how long after the implant will I feel relief? That we typically turn on the implant immediately. 
uh, after it's been implanted. Uh, so some patients may need some tweaking and reprogramming that happens very, very quickly after the implant. And uh, so the patient should start enjoying pain relief within 24 hours after the implant has been completed. Uh, and is there any age limit? No, not really. It all depends on the comorbidities and the patient's level of function. Uh, it used to be that we used to say that once the patient is about 80 years old, then maybe they're not the best candidates anymore. But I've changed my mind about that, especially nowadays. I meet a lot of 80-year-olds who are far more functional and far more athletic than I am in my, in my 50s. So, so I think that... Uh, Again, that's an individual question and it depends on every single patient. But the general answer is no, there is no age limit. Great. And I know we talked about the recovery process, but just, you know, more specifically, you know, really, are there any limitations, you know, either during the trial, uh, the one week trial or during the, the implant uh, recovery process? During the trial, there's really no limitations. We actually encourage the patients to go out there and do all the things that they love to do in order for us to see how the device is really working in a real life routine for the patients. The patients do have a dressing on their back. I ask the patients not to get that dressing wet, but they can actually take a shower with a handheld shower in the front as long as the dressing stays dry and intact throughout the six day trial that we typically do for these patients. Once the leads come out, the patients can go home and take a shower and wash their back very easily. It's not a big deal. With a permanent implant, we ask the patients to keep the area dry and intact for about six days. Once the wounds start to heal, the patients can start to shower. Within two to three weeks, they can actually jump into a pool and, and start swimming as well. So the, there's no limitation per se. Nobody's bedridden. You know, we want the patients to be up and around. The whole idea behind this elective procedure is to make the patients better so they can function better and enjoy their lives. So the last thing we need to do is put them on more bed rest. Great. Um, and then directly related to that following on is um, how long, um, how much time between the trial and the implant? Um, typically, we'd like to do the permanent implant at two to three weeks before we pull the leads out from the trial. We like to get this process done with a good cadence. Most patients get their implants within um, six to eight weeks after the trial leads have been removed. Um, and that's actually the case for most uh, implanting physicians across the country. But if we've gone to three months, then something is wrong. Between the trial and the permanent implant, there shouldn't be more than three months time. Great. One more question that just came in and I, I'll let you answer first and then um, you know, chime in on it, but is um, will this help with low back pain as well as uh, you know, painful diabetic neuropathy? So we have very robust evidence published in the peer reviewed literature for the use of this of a solution for low back and leg pain. And we've been using it for that solution since 2015 amongst many other indications. Having said that, specific programming may be required uh, for us to be able to get low back pain and neuropathy in the patients. But the short answer is yes, but that's the kind of thing that needs to be discussed with the implanting physician in order to determine if it can happen or not. So it's not a resounding yes, but it's very likely that we could potentially control the patient's low back pain as well as painful diabetic neuropathy with the same device. Great. And I, I will add on to that. So specifically for that low back pain, you can visit um, uh, a website, uh, www.nevrohfx.com, which is a bit more focused in terms of, um, you know, back pain, and you can find more information on that. And it has the same, the same tool right uh, in the top right, where uh, you can find a physician as well to be able to, to speak to them about that. Great. Excellent. Um, there's no more open questions. I'll, you guys, if you if you want to, I'm going to ask Dr. Amber Delphin one more, so you can uh, you know sneak in, just hit that that Q and A button right at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Um, but Dr. Amber Delphin, you know, just lastly, in your own experience, are there any other questions um, that you hear from your patients regularly? Yeah. So one question that comes up all the time with the patients is, how many of the patients that have, have tried this have moved forward and gotten the which is actually a very, very valid question when you think about it, you know, because we think that the trial is incredibly important because the patient gets a glimpse of what they're about to get permanently. 
And in my hands, in the, my patient population, the trial to permanent ratio, the number of patients who try this and move forward and get the permanent implant is about nine out of 10. So 90% of the patients move forward and get the same implant. And that's really encouraging. Uh, so it's not the panacea, it's not a cure all for everyone. And this is the reason why we do the trial to begin with. And pain is incredibly complex. Our patients are complex. The human body is really complex. And I love the idea of being able to test drive something first before I actually do a permanent implant on a, on a patient. And I think the patients love it just as much. Great. Thank you. Um, one more question that just came up, I, but it's an important question we covered. I'll, we will talk about again is um, do most insurance plans cover this? And, um, you know, just to, that it is covered by all major insurance plans, again, including Medicare and Medicare supplemental. Um, but again, really, you know, any specific plan questions are really, um, you know, best uh, to discuss with a provider offering the HFX solution, because those, you know, that coverage and those costs um, will really vary, you know, based on a, a individual by individual basis. Um, so speaking with a provider, again, you can find on HFX or PDN um, by clicking find a physician in the top right corner. Um, and having that conversation will really, um, really help to, to zero in on, um, you know, your own, uh, you know, potential uh, for use of this, uh, the HFX solution. Great. Um, I think that, that that looks like it's it. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. So Stephen, if you wanna hit the next slide and, you know, definitely, you know, if you, of course, if you have any additional questions, um, I've said it again, I'll, I'll say it, uh, 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 I've said it before, I'll, I'll say it again, you can visit hfxforpdn.com um, and there's a wealth of information on the website. Um, so I encourage you to click around um, and, and to uh, discover there. You can go deeper into how the HFX solution uh, works. Uh, there's a video that visually you know, goes into exactly how that, um, how that would be working for you. Uh, there's a page, YH, YHFX, what to expect. Um, and there's also other, you know, additional FAQs there uh, that you can review. Some covered here, but, you know, um, sometimes there may be some others additionally. And um, also within the site, there are other patient stories and videos that you can read and watch those. And you can also hear what other uh, physicians are saying about the HFX solution. Next slide. Oh, sorry, previous slide, sorry. Um, so just, you know, next steps, um, what, what, what's next, right? So we've recorded this webinar and so coming soon, uh, give us a little, a little bit of time, but coming soon, uh, an email will be coming out with a recording of the presentation um, for you to watch. Um, but of course, again, you know, you can visit www.hfxrepdn.com. Uh, there's an assessment you can click into right from the homepage uh, to really see if the HFX solution is right for you. Uh, and when you complete that, you'll receive, um, and if it looks like it, it's going to make sense for you, you'll receive a personalized discussion guide with your answers to support having a conversation with your doctor. Um, and of course, while it's optional, if you do provide your phone number, an HFX coach will be personally assigned to you and available to answer any questions that you might have throughout your entire decision-making process. So don't feel like if you have a question that you think of, you know, 10 minutes after this is over that, you know, you've lost your chance. Um, if you go and take that assessment um, and, you know, fill that out and provide your phone number, there will be uh, a live person on the other end of the, the phone um, who will be able to reach out and you can go through any questions that you have um, with them. And they'll always, if you call back, they'll always be familiar with exactly what you've already talked about to date um, and maybe, you know, what further questions you may be having coming in the future. And, you know, of course, we've mentioned it uh, before in this presentation, but also really the next step is to find a physician in your local area offering the HFX solution. So again, that find a physician tool right at the top right. Um, and this doctor, it's not replacing your primary care physician. They're gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna work closely together um, really to provide the best care possible for, uh, for you. And that wraps us up for today. So thank you again for your time, Dr. Emmer Delphin. And of it's course, thank you to everyone who joined us today and um, really great questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.